All right, guys, uh, bringing you along just to show you quickly how you can test for timing on these uh, Land Rovers with the 2.0 four-cylinder. Apparently, it's a common problem for them to have some uh, out-of-time trouble codes. Uh, the customer brought this to me. He wants me to verify if it's truly out of time. Uh, he looks like he did uh, a couple cam sensors or whatnot, but uh, he wanted to stop there and not throw more parts at it and verify if it's actual timing. Now, I have done some of these in the past and I've gotten familiar on how to quickly test them uh, as far as the setup. Uh, you want to, or the best way to verify if they are actually truly out of time is to check your cam crank signals and compare them to a known good. The actual trouble codes are related to cam crank signals. So um, these are, so it's a 0016, 0017, uh, crankshaft, correlation, and same thing. Uh, the customer did mention something about the fuel pressure code, um, but if you are aware um, or not aware, when you are out of time, you can create either too much pressure or too little pressure on the high fuel pressure system. Uh, the reason why is the fuel pump, high pressure fuel pump right here with these metal lines is driven and run off of one of the camshafts, the exhaust one on this particular setup. And it has to be in time for when it uh, tries to build pressure and inject fuel. And if the timing on this side, the drive side for the camshaft is off or not in time, compared to when it's being electrically controlled, the fuel pump, meaning uh, for injection and controlling of fuel pressure, uh, it can build pressure uh, to the wrong levels. And so it monitors that with the fuel pressure sensor. Um, so that's what that trouble code is for. So a lot is pointing to actual physical timing being off. And the way to test these, if you get one of these in your shop and you're curious and you want to not do a lot of uh, intrusive testing, uh, you want to grab your crankshaft signal which the crankshaft sensor lives down by the uh, uh, crankshaft pulley. It's a little bit difficult to get to, um, but a quick tip and pointer that I've gotten to know is this harness that runs along the valve cover here on the uh, front side of the engine, timing-wise. Uh, if you want to open that up, then there's a couple wires and then a shielded loom. That shielded loom is for the three wires for the crankshaft sensor, and it's going to be the wire in green, I believe, uh, sorry, the yellow and green wire for the signal line. And then on the cam sensors, there's one here for intake. The other one is right there for exhaust. It's pin three, so it's one, two, three. The one to the far right, that's the signal wire. And... Not that it's true for all years make model, but wire color for pin three on intakes, brown and blue, and then exhaust is uh, green and purple, and then the crankshaft sensor is yellow and green. So all these tips, if you guys want to gather your own signal, uh, and the way that I do, I like to check base timing, meaning just as if you were to set the timing and spin the motor manually but we're gonna do a crank no start. So just check the timing cranking, where the base timing is, at, where it starts off at. And so in order to do that, I always unplug the injectors and that is the connector right there. Uh, that way we get rid of fuel delivery and we won't be able to uh, run the engine. That connector's a little bit of a pain to split, but uh, that's where you, uh, disable the engine from starting. Just for giggles, I am also adding relative compression right here, the starter current draw, and the ignition sink uh, to see if that ignition strike is off of the compression peaks. So we're monitoring quite a few things, trying to gather our data and compare it to known good, 
and also this will let us see if our sink is off from our peaks. Okay, so we've got the scope running. I'll explain the channels after the capture. I'm going to throw a battery jump box just to get a good cranking event. Now mind you, I did want to explain when this uh, runs or attempts to run, it's an extended crank, rough start, rough running, uh, just doesn't run well. Blue channel is going to be our crank uh, sensor signal, red is going to be our sink, let's bring that down to the relative compression, green is intake. And yellow is our exhaust. Let's look at relative compression first. Now, this is showing us pretty good timing. If you guys are aware, uh, for relative compression testing, your ignition sync or control from the computer is to strike at a peak of compression towers which these are your each cylinders top dead center point that's where you want to hit the ignition and for this one surprisingly it is at that point so we cannot use relative compression with a sink to determine on this particular engine and setup if our timing is truly off um, to go from there so what we will need to do is use our cam crank signals in this particular setup both intake and exhaust cam signals should overlap each other which they actually look like they do so cam to cam timing is not off another surprising thing so last thing we have left is to Compare with our crankshaft signal, which we will have to gather a known good. And I'll have to retake this capture with higher sample rate. As you can see, some of these, uh, let's call it teeth signals, are not fully being captured. And I don't want to mess anything up. Even though you can see the gaps, and that could be a reference point, um, I want to get full teeth captured. So let me redo this with better uh, resolution and then we'll compare all right guys so we're looking at a supposed known good uh, as I said before the intake and exhaust cams will basically overlap each other uh, as you can see that on the first top two ones um, and then where they land in relation to the crankshaft I'm gonna pick this point here and I counted already it's about the sixth tooth uh, from this gap uh, of this, uh, actually this line here, this uprise. So that's the point that I'm going to use as a reference to compare with the capture that we got from our uh, test vehicle here at the shop. All right, guys, so here is the waveform that we captured uh, from the vehicle. I'm going to zoom in here in this area just to take a look and see the uh, relationship to the uh, crankshaft so let's move that up and get a look now if you remember I was using this point uh, this uprise line uh, in relation to this gap with the known good uh, the other one I told you was about six teeth over from the gap and here clearly we've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right about 14 uh, teeth that the uprise is occurring. So there is our trouble code, I guess you would say, 
where it's coming from. Uh, the cam to cam seem to be correct. Just the cams to crank are what is out of sync. Now just to, uh, one thing I did want to show you guys, which I ended up noticing when looking at the waveform, if we zoom in here at the beginning, this is when we initially started to crank the engine, if you, let's pay attention at cams to cam. Hopefully you can tell, but this um, tooth area, this drop down, is very very narrow compared to this drop down uh, point where it's a larger point now the green is intake the yellow gold whatever is the exhaust um, and then again here this drop down is very narrow compared to that and then it the drop down occurs sooner here than uh, than on the exhaust so I, and the, I noticed that, and it starts here as well. The drop down is sooner or before the exhaust on the intake. And if we continue on, it stays this way. Uh, again, sooner, so it all starts here. Um, it seemed to uprise about the same time and point. It's just this one uh, drops down sooner, and then these are narrower these are much more narrow compared to the exhaust and it's continuous for a little bit now what the only thing I could attribute that to is or the only way this can happen is for the rate of speed from one to the other be different it has to be different the intake is going faster or hitting points faster than the exhaust uh, that seems to be what's going on with the graph that we're getting in the initial crank up and start up point again um, still these are narrow narrow but this one is getting a little bit closer to the exhaust there. It's still narrow. Still narrow. And then at this point, let's see. Yeah. So this seemed to have. So this guy here did get wider compared to the previous cycle. Let's go over back to the left. So if you look, this is that drop down where it was narrow. And the very next cycle, look how different it got compared to what it was. So it, it slowed down and it got wider from that cycle to this one. And then the very next cycle, which I have marked with this uh, ruler, that very next cycle, which is this guy here, um, everything got back to being in sync as far as cam to cam at this point, which is about 11 seconds in after running. And from that point on, is where it stays steady cam to cam um, and doesn't change but what again what is crazy is that uh, initially in starting there is a difference in speed between the intake cam and the exhaust cam